Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Holy Gospel that was read from John chapter 12. The old saying goes, everyone loves a parade. Parades are fun. You bring the family and children. You watch a, a float go by or a band go by. And you might wave and cheer and wave your hand at those perhaps you might know. Whether you participated in a parade or just watched a parade from the roadside, parades are a lot of fun. But parades come to an end. When it's finished, you fold up your blanket, your chairs, and you go home. Well, today we learn that Jesus participated in a parade. As a matter of fact, he was the main event. As a matter of fact, he was the only entry. Jesus travels on the road to Jerusalem, lowly and sitting on a donkey. Zechariah 9.9 is being fulfilled. 500 years earlier, Zechariah clearly said in our Old Testament reading that all of this is going to take place. And sure enough, it did. In order to honor Jesus, people were pulling palm branches off the trees and laying them on the road. They took their garments and laid them on the road. The crowd quoted Psalm 118 when they, when they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna means save us, save us now. And this is what they were crying out. And furthermore, they recognize that Jesus is a king, a wonderful event. How do you view Jesus? Do you view Jesus merely and or only as a, a moral teacher, someone who had some good things to say, but that death and resurrection were really not important in his life? Are you a Christian so that God would bless you materially? Do you view Jesus merely as a bread king who will give you what you want? Are you unwilling to follow the real Jesus because that would mean getting rid of your personal idols? Are you yourself an idol, abusing others and forcing your authority upon them? Do you want others <clears throat> to serve you? What kind of Jesus are you looking for? Are you looking for a political Jesus who will fix all our problems here in the United States? Are you looking for a Jesus who will put sinners of the day in their place so that you can live a peace here on this earth? Are you looking for a Jesus who will reform our society? Are you looking for a Jesus who will give glory here on earth? Are you looking for a Jesus who will allow you to sin. If this is the kind of Jesus you are looking for, then this is not the Jesus that's revealed in Scripture. For Jesus, the second person in the Trinity, came to suffer and die upon the cross. He came to save you from sin, death, and the day of devil. He did not come to be served, but to serve you with forgiveness, life, and salvation. Is Jesus a king? Yes, he is a king. He is coming into Jerusalem righteous and having salvation. He comes to save us from our sin and to conquer our enemies of death and the devil. The old saying goes, everyone loves a parade. But the Romans did not love this parade because the crowd was honoring a king. But there was only one king for them, for the Romans, and that was Caesar. The Romans wondered whether Jesus is a political revolutionary who will stir up Jerusalem. Would Jesus cause an insurrection in the city? But Jesus is not that kind of king. The Jewish leaders also did not like this parade because Jesus' popularity is increasing. Right, Just right before our text in John chapter 11, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And this caused an increase of an attraction into Jesus, who he is. 
And so the crowds were following Jesus and honoring him. And the Jewish leaders wondered whether they, 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 they were jealous. The fact that Jesus' popularity was increasing. They said to one another, quote, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after Jesus. Satan did not like this parade either. Three years ago, Satan tried to make Jesus sin and make him fall down and worship Satan instead of the Father. The cross would mean that Satan's head would be crushed and he would be defeated. Did Jesus love this parade? If Jesus continues to ride into Jerusalem, it will mean a betrayal, a betrayal by Judas, a denial by Peter, an unfair trial by the Sanhedrin, the mockery of the soldiers, the jeering of the crowd, crucify him, crucify him, the sentence of crucifixion by Pilate, the pain of crucifixion and suffering, and the pain of enduring the wrath of God because of our sin. What do you think? Should Jesus continue on his journey toward Jerusalem knowing the suffering and pain that will endure? Or should he turn around? We will sing a communion hymn which goes right on, right on in majesty and lowly pomp right on to die. O Christ, the triumphs now begin or captive death and conquering sin. Right on, Jesus. We need you to hosanna us, to save us from the devil who stole our righteousness in the Garden of Eden. We need you to defeat Satan, whom we cannot defeat by ourselves. Right on, Jesus. We need you to hosanna us, to save us by means of the cross, through your death, through your righteous sacrifice. Right on, Jesus, we need you to hosanna us, to save us from our enemy of death and to give us life. Right on, Jesus, we need you to hosanna us, to save us from our sins which weigh us down, which hurt our loved ones, which keeps us from reflecting your love in our lives. Your death upon the cross will provide the forgiveness for all our sins. Right on, Jesus, we need you to hosanna us, to save us, so that heaven will be open for us poor sinners. We have nothing. Our hands are empty, our hearts are crushed, and our spirit is broken in despair. We need you to hosanna, save us. And thanks be to God that Jesus did not turn around, but the Palm Sunday parade continued all the way to Jerusalem, all the way to the cross. Jesus rode into Jerusalem in a most unusual way. He came riding on a humble donkey and not a horse. He came as a king with no soldiers. Normally soldiers fight for the king. And every king expects his subject to die for him. But Jesus, the servant king, lays down his life for his people, for you and me. Jesus enters the battlefield not with weapons and swords. He enters Jerusalem not fighting a military battle. He enters Jerusalem for the purpose of fighting the devil. Jesus enters Jerusalem in order to offer a righteous sacrifice upon the cross that we cannot offer. The punishment and the wrath of God that we deserved, Jesus endured. And the sinless one goes to die a sinner's death. Our epistle lesson said that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death upon a cross. The unblemished Lamb of God enters Jerusalem to be the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb, in order to take away the sin of the world. We who stand on this side of the cross know the rest of the story. But yes, Jesus died on Good Friday, 
And three days later, he rose again, a celebration we will celebrate next Sunday. The Palm Sunday prayed ended. The journey to the cross was completed. But there is a journey that continues. We all journey with Christ to heaven. We are his baptized lambs, and he leads us on his path of righteousness. And on our journey, we pause every Sunday to be refreshed and renewed by the gospel. Today, we shout songs of victory because Jesus, our King, is among us. He is just in having salvation, the salvation we so desperately need. He does not come riding on a lonely donkey, but he comes by lowly means of bread and wine. Jesus comes in order to bless us with life and salvation. He comes to feed us with his word. And, and, and in order to give us saving fruit, the saving fruits of his death and his resurrection, as the children and the multitudes on Palm Sunday sang, so also in our communion liturgy, we sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes in, in, in the Lord's Supper to save us and to forgive our sins. He is really present among us for the purpose of saving us. God has richly blessed you in many ways. He has given you life from the womb of your mother. He gives you your daily bread. He has restored your soul in the waters of holy baptism. He taught you about salvation in his son, Christ Jesus. And yet, as a believer in Christ, there is a cost to following Jesus. There will be hostility from an unbelieving world. And our travel to heaven will be difficult. But persevere when trial and tribulation afflict you. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. Don't turn around. But ride on. Ride on with Jesus leading you on his path of righteousness. Ride on all the way to heaven. His word will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Then, when you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your parade will end. But the rejoicing will continue. There in heaven, you will be dressed in white robes, holding a palm branch in your hand. And you will join the heavenly congregation, singing, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Thanks be to God for the salvation that he has provided for us in Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus in a life everlasting. Amen.